What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel, it's me Kaz at Level, covering more infinite magic raid content. And before we get into this video on Elik, yes, Elik, he's a beast, uh, please do click like, subscribe and comment below to help the channel grow. Now, let's get into the video and first of all, obviously we're going to talk about the skills and we'll go through exclusives, emblems and auras as we always do. Um, and then we'll do a little showcase as well of Elik performing his duties as one of the best supports in the game. Pre-Mythic. Pre-Mythic. So, let's go into his first skill, which is his basic attack, Thunder Palm. Now, this can be very good, and I'll explain why. It deals 180% defense damage to a single enemy, with 15% chance to inflict stun for one turn. This chance increases by 3% for every one layer of buff the target has, up to 15%. Obviously, the damage increases, and we get more of a chance with upgrades. Now, this works amazingly well with Catherine uh, on a counter attack. If you have enough effects hit on your Elik, he is going to go through the enemy team, um, hitting the stun. So they're rendered inefficient on the next turn. Now, his second ability, Electromagnetic Pulse, is very, very handy. It increases all allies' defense by 60%. Yes, that's right. It's defense up two, not one. And tenacity by 30% for two turns. Now, tenacity, remember, makes you take less critical damage. The cooldown is reduced here, making it a four-turn cooldown once he's upgraded. Now, his passive is he reduces Elix critical damage received by 28%, transfers debuffs received by that ally with the highest attack to Elic, meaning our highest attacking allies are safe from debuffs thanks to Elic being on the team. This effect can be triggered up to three times until the start of Elic's next turn. Now this does increase our critical damage reduction as he's upgraded as well. It's an amazing passive skill. Uh, we'll show you why in a moment. Um, his ultimate was last active skill is grant all allies consolidation two for two turns. This is obviously a 40% reduction in damage taken, which is, well, it's a huge amount. This affects everything, not only direct damage, but it affects damage over time as well. Um, now let's have a little look at his exclusives. So after seeing his amazing supportive kit that he does boast. So his exclusives are really <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Uh, level one, he also grants all allies resistance debuff for one turn. This is super, super nice. Now. Level 2 is where he starts to get really interesting. Elix steals two layers of a random buff from the enemy target with the highest attack at the beginning of the turn. That is absolutely massive in PvP especially. So you think your enemy, even if Elix one on one versus another enemy and say it's a, say it's a Catherine or, or a Nordak, he's going to be stealing the likes of damage immunity, counter attack, shield, from whoever it is. Um, it's also stripping buffs from the highest attacking enemy on that team in PvP and it's at the beginning of the turn. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty nasty to say the least. You know, he can, it just makes him so good for PvP. Now, level three is massive. Electric Guard also grants all allies a shield by 30% of his max health for two turns, making him like just a support animal an absolute animal uh you think he's granting us 40 percent reduced damage taken and a 30 percent shield in a one boom um this as well after increasing everyone's defense by 60 percent and tenacity up as well then granting resistance debuff too so it's just it's insane how much he can really make your team tankier. Um, let's have a little look at his emblems. I'll move myself into the center a moment. You can screen snip this. This is for his shield um, and resistances, uh, that kind of thing. Having some effect it from the support tree here as well and some of these skills increasing his speed, that kind of thing. So have a little snip and then we'll go through the emblems that we've selected. We've selected defense percent increase. Healed effects increase because he's going to be taking dots from your allies and he does need a bit of extra healing there from that. Uh, before the end of the wave, he has effects resistance increase, which means he may not have those dots land on him quite so much. Effects resistance is pretty viable for Elik. You'll understand why if you use him. Uh, control resistance is increased uh, when self health is reduced by 25% or more by direct damage or a single skill. He heals himself by 9%. Uh, restores self health at the beginning of the first three turns of each wave and then of course maximum health increased so that we can get those big shields off especially especially in green mark tower now 
on the support, we take the health enhancement again to further increase our shield. Um, when South has a shield, damage taken is reduced. He's often going to have a shield, especially when you're pairing him with the likes of Catherine. Uh, shield enhancement, so his shield granted will give a bigger effect. Before the end of the first turn, the effect hit is increased. And this means that our stun has more of a chance to land. When inflicting a layer of buff or debuff successfully, South speed increases up to five times. Uh, magic touch, obviously the chance to reduce um, uh, the cooldown on a skill. For allies under control effects, healing effect and shield effect is increased. This can be pretty handy in PvP, especially if someone's been, un, you know, is under the control uh, status, then we get a bigger shield on them as well, just to protect them a little bit more. For targets with a lower speed than self, effect hit is increased. So that's it for his emblems currently. Uh, let's have a look at the aura and what is used for him. However, I have a really terrible aura right now. I have range hit aura so that I can get those stuns off. Um, the best aura you could probably use is, say, recovery horn aura, aura so that we can also heal our allies when we're shielding or we're granting defense up. It just makes him that much more supportive. Um, other than that, it would be possibly extra recovery aura to make himself uh, tankier and uh, you could go down the route of Dwarven Blessing Aura but I'm not too sure it is increasing his health yes and it does help his shields you know be bigger especially in Dwarven Ruin um, but I still think over if I was to choose between Dwarven Aura and Blesser and Recovery Horn Aura I feel like I would go Recovery Horn Aura you could always make him a, um, a real support Poor in, in, in a sense that you could have him the mastery surge granting allies with, with mastery surge so you know you have some options um do, 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 which other ones would that be hit grandmaster aura would be nice as well but this is a legend um magic touch aura would provide him with uh you know much more survivability as well because he is taking damage from our from our allies okay so let's have a little look at his equipment and how best to equip him now the sets you're going to want to focus for to begin with say are health or defense or speed you know it depends if you have an e3 if you don't have an e3 i'd probably go more towards defense than health um because you know we want it for the shield but other than that i'd probably head more down a defense rate path especially when he's buffing himself with defense up 60 percent as well so defense is probably the way to go if you do not have them at e3 um then we could go down the route of i mean you could also go down the effect resistance route so that he's not taking quite as much uh, damage over times or control uh, abilities um do, 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 do. feather set is what i use it, it seems to be the best set for him so that he can go early on to get that shield off for our allies or put on the, the defense rate either way you want to play it um also increasing the shield for everyone uh the first aid set is not really useful here you could also go down at the tenacity set here with the defense increase in tenacity uh that would make him more tankier ignore the mastery set um toughness as well would be okay but yeah if you don't have an exclusive to go down the defense route if you have got an exclusive to go down the health route uh, so let's have a little look at what, what does it say on the stats here it says see it says it does say health defense and effect it it doesn't say effect resistance but it should it should say this because this is a vital part especially when we're coming against waves that have damage over time because we're taking that off and we're getting so many stacks and us we will die um, so, you know, you're going to want to focus, like I said, either, oh my goodness, the market of beast, not 666. Um, you're going to want to health if you have the exclusives, or you're going to want to go for defense if you don't have them. Um, effect hit is recommended. You can see that here, and it, it is very good. Um, depending on where you are. Say if you, if you're progressing through campaign, you don't have a controller with you, then take effect hit with you because that's going to help you stun certain characters that really do need to be stunned. Effect resistance is vital in my opinion, and you should always try and have this as high as you can get it, but try not to sacrifice with too many other stats. Speed again is always vital for us. Let me move into the center a moment. Um, so as you can see, this, this is a terrible role here. We've got healing effect twice, you know, maybe okay for say a Catherine, uh, but health rate and effect resistance on this, um, health rate, speed, defense rate is the perfect kind of roles that you can get. Well, I mean, crit damage could have been effect resistance there for the ultimate, but you know, we could have had effect hit. Uh, defense rate again and health rate. This is a very nice piece. 
And on this piece here, it's, 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 it's an attacking piece, okay? But Alex, it's okay, you know, if I had a health rate here, it would make him even stronger. All defense rate, it does have a little bit of effect resistance on it. Now, for the first artifact, I take defense. Um, I look for defense rate and health rate. I would look for speed as well, but I don't currently have the best artifacts to go in here. We could go for this one, though. Speed increase and effect resistance increase. 14k drop, and it'd be quite a bit less defense. You know what? Let's throw that on. Um, the second totem I choose, effect resistance. Now, you could either choose between effect resistance or you could go for effect it. That's entirely up to you, depending where you are using him. Um, mastery is not needed here, ignore that. Um, health rate, speed, or defense rate, affect it again, or effect resistance, depending on which you've taken. Always take speed for your final artifact if you can. Effect resistance here is nice, and defense rate is nice. It could have been improved further with the health rate, however. So, that is it for Elix gear, and as you can see, the stats that I have currently um, is, is a good amount of health, um, a very good amount of defense, Speed is, is pretty, pretty high, 2033. Um, effect it is only 17%, which is a shame right now, but you can see that I've had bad rolls. Um, effect resistance is 66%, so that's very nice. Now, let's have a little showcase of Elix, shall we? I will say, I will say last night, late last night, and GWL, I am going to call you out here because he was saying that Elix is no good and that he can't do green tower. Wow. Well, I will say to you all now, whoever said that Elec was a trash tier hero, look at what he did last night. Uh, this team cleared floor 30. Yes, okay, it was two stars. It was very close. But this team here... Let me move over. Wait, sorry. No, you wasn't in this level. It was Maeve, Taff, Hazonia, Space, and uh, Elec. This team cleared Tower Green 30. So... I don't care what anyone says anymore about Elec. You want to talk bad about him, that's fine. You want to call him trash, that's fine. But you're all wrong. And it's been proven now. It's been absolutely proven. This is a non-mythic team. A non-mythic green tower team. Yes, okay, they are exclusive. They're all 150. But two right, they need to be. If they're not, you're not, you're not clearing it about a mythic. Um, so this shows how strong a support he is. Space in here, increasing the term he's on here. Maeve. Maeve was huge here for the speed down as well. Uh, Taff was helping with poisons, and obviously his Onya is fantastic anyway. But Elec was MVP here, thanks to his shield, his defense up, his tenacity. Um, even his stun came in help as well, a little bit, even with that low effect hit chance. We're not going to showcase Green Tower for it, because it would be an even longer video. Well, we're going to jump straight in to campaign. We're going to go into campaign, and we'll show what he can do here. Now, bear in mind, he doesn't have the effect, the effect hit. Oh, my equipment bags are full. One moment. Okay, so we're going to have a little look in campaign and we're going to use, no, take these out, take these out, take these out, throw in Catherine, Elliot, and. Should we throw in, throw in Sigmund? You know what? Let's make it really interesting. Let's make it really interesting. Let's throw in Hardak. Let's throw in Hardak. Okay, Catherine, Elec, Hardak. Now, bear in mind, Elec is going to help Hardak, so he's going to buff his defense as well. We could throw in Sigmund too and buff his defense, or Gunner and buff his defense, but we're not going to go down that route. We want to three-man team this and see how it does in, say, campaign. Turn off auto just one moment. Now, we'll put up counter-attack. We're then going to use our shield again, and we're going to put up uh, Consolidation 2. As you can see here, it's very nice. Now, obviously, um, Hardak is buffed, so he can do some nasty damage already. He would have buffed self-defense there. Oh, we'll just throw it onto auto. Just throw it onto auto. Just throw it onto auto and see, you know, because this could be a bit long. This could be a bit long, but interesting too. Interesting too, just to see the survivability. Now, bear in mind, imagine if Elec had Recovery Horn or on here as well. Would we need a healer? Would we need a healer? Would be interesting. Oh, come on, Alex, you've got to get some stuns off, mate. You've got to get some stuns off.
hard axe doing all the work. Hard axe doing all the work. Which he's meant to, he's meant to. There's a stun. There's a stun with a 17% effect too. And hard axe clearing up there. Okay, so we're into the boss. What kind of, how many times is this going to take? But you, I mean, you can see how, just look at all these buffs. Oh, no, they've been vanished. <laughs> they've vanished. They got sucked away from us. Oh, you meanie. It's okay, we have enough going on. We have enough going on. It will, you know, it will win. It just take a little bit of time. Just take a little, little bit of time. It's just, especially with the likes of defense heroes, if you have, if you have a defense team, say, Gunner, uh, Sigmund, um, Hardak, uh, there are many other defense heroes, or oh, there are some, I should say, I won't say there's many, um, even Shielder, Shield, I would like to see Shielder used with Elec, um, just to see a pure defense damage team going into play with the likes of Elec, uh, because he really would enable them. Holy, What is... Okay, that's his blocking damage, all right. Okay, for some reason, I thought we had more on there than that. I mean, there you go, that that was um, Campaign Hell 1210 done with Hardak, Elec, and Catherine. Yes, they are all high, and yes, my Sanctuary is very high too, so bear that in mind as well. Um, a normal account won't be able to go into the campaign and just clear that, but that shows you how good Hardak is as well, especially combined with Elec. Um, let's have a little look at Dungeon. Let's go into Nagir. Should we go into Nagir? Stage 30, we have an Elec team here with the likes of others too, yes. Uh, let's just quickly do an auto play on this and then we're going to skip over to an arena battle and just see how he does there. Now, smart casting is set up on this, so it shouldn't be too long. The fact is, is that the defense that we get from Elec combined with Catherine and Luna means that we're pretty much unkillable, especially for the waves, you know, and these are, this is stage third, this is the highest stage in the game. This is the highest stage in the game. You can't get any higher. Um, so it's supposed to be hard. You see the stuns coming off here. That's from Elec. That's, that's Elec. There's no one else stunning there. And you can see he also is taking debuffs from our highest attacking hero too. So always remember that as well. Into the final stage now, or the final wave, we should say. Should get counter attack up on the next turn. Um, Alex buffed as well. I mean, it's just it, it, how anyone could have said that Alex was a bad hero. I just hope you all feel put in place. I just hope you all feel put in place to rate him trash and to have people come to me saying they fed their Alex. I, you know, like absolutely gutted and this is why we need to be so careful when we're giving out information to people because if we give up misinformation that then harms someone's account so elec is a god elec is a god isn't it you know none of you can say he's not he does everything we need to do in the support without the likes of a mythic say nordak um okay he's good in faction of boss as well it's good in faction a uh, faction abyss as well. Let's have a little look in the classic arena quickly. Um, let's who's who can we hit? Who can we hit? Is anyone I recognise? Let's let's attack Fat Boy. Wait, yeah, let's attack. Let's, let's yeah, let's attack Fat Boy. Let's take up top. Let's take up the seal. He hasn't got a seal, so we're going to throw in a Cindo. We're going to throw an Elic. Um, this could be an interesting team. No, but we're not going to go that route. We're not going to go that route. We're going to go Besmok. Um, we're going to go... I'm not going to use my Margarita cheese. I want to give Fat, Fat Boy a chance here because otherwise... Okay, let's let's go Besmok, Megan. And... Should go Agatha? Should go Agatha? No, that would make no sense. You know what, we're going to have to take in, in Elena, just in case we need to strip Catherine here. Just in case we need to strip Catherine's buffs, so we're going to take in Elena. 
And he does have the likes of... Um, he has a health burn team. This could be nasty. I could be walking into something here. Okay, luckily my Ascendo is faster. Alright. Okay. So, as you can see there, he went to... Um, Ascendo went to hit a buff onto... Or say silence onto Megan, but Elec ate that. Elec ate that. He just ate it for her. Now, obviously, we can just have so much defense and shield. Bear's mark. And who do we nuke quickly? No, we don't. We'll just put an AoE down. It should kill two. Yeah. And then we can defense up as well. We're going to do that for Luna. Yeah, that's okay. Can we nuke down his on you here? Nearly. Oh, getting the burns off. But did you see? Alec took those health burns. He took the health burns that landed onto Megan. Oh, he got my best mark. He got my best mark. So, it's been a long video already, but I just wanted to show you that Alec is an amazing hero, and I stand by what I rated him in the very beginning of the game as a god-tier hero, and I believe you will all agree, I believe you will all agree now, that he is a god-tier hero, and that no one can say otherwise, because the fact is, he helped clear the final tower in the game, and I will get this free starred with him too, and then I'll make a video on it, and I'll showcase that too. So, I'm Quasitable, thank you for watching everyone, take care, have a great evening. <laughs>